Dear students, how are you all? We all know that a new textbook in English was introduced for the class 9th, that is Beehive. In this video, I would like to discuss the first unit, the fun they had. And the lesson, the fun they had, was written by Isaac Asimov. This lesson, the fun they had, is a science fiction short story which was written by the great famous writer Isaac Asimov. Before going to know the story, let us discuss a few details of the author. The author is Isaac Asimov. He was born on 2nd January 1920 in Russia and he died on 6th April 1992 in the United States. He was a famous writer in English language and he has written so many short stories also in that the famous are the last question, the fun they had. The fun they had which was prescribed for us in the ninth class as a lesson. This is the first lesson. And he had written so many science fiction novels. That notable works are Galactic Empire series, robot series, foundation series. Based on his novels and stories, so many movies were picturized. In that, the famous movies were I, Robot, Bicentennial Man, Nightfall and The End of Eternity. This is about the writer Isaac Asimov. Now, let's discuss the glossary of the lesson the fun they had. Crinkly, which means with many folds or lines. Attic, which means a space just below the roof used as a storeroom. Scornful, which means contemptuous. What does it mean contemptuous? Showing you something is worthless. The next word, slot. Slot means a given space, time or position. The next word, geared to. Gear to means adjusted to a particular standard or level. The next word loftily. Loftily means in a superior way. The next word regular. Regular in this context it means normal. That means the usual kind. The next word betcha. It is actually informal use of the word. And whenever we are speaking very fast in our speech that I bet you has been changed into betcha. That means the meaning of betcha is nothing but I am sure. Dispute. Dispute means disagree. The next word, nonchalantly. Nonchalantly means not showing much interest or enthusiasm. That means carelessly. These are the words we can find in this glossary. Then let's discuss the summary of the fun they had. The fun they had is a science fiction short story which was written by Isaac Asimov. Already we have discussed Isaac Asimov details in the previous slides. So here you could understand it's a science fiction. What does it mean a science fiction? Fiction means imagination. So that imaginary writing which is dealing with the element of science that's nothing but we can call as science fiction. So, Isaac Asimov was a very famous writer who has done so many works in the field of science fiction. And it is a short story. The fun they had is a short story which is having the element of science fiction. It is a story of two young children named Tommy and Marchie. So, this is the story, the fun they had. It is the short story about two children. One is Margie, the another one is Tommy. Margie is 11 years old and Tommy is 13 years old. They live in the year 2157. By this you could understand this story doesn't belong to present and this story doesn't belong to past. This story belongs to future. That means in the future. 2157 that is the year so by that year how the circumstances what the changes in the education so these kind of details have been discussed in this uh, story they educated through computers at their homes 
Here, the word they refers to Tommy and Margie. They get education through the computers and not through the human teachers. They get education at their homes, not in the schools. By this, we can understand in the future, there will be no schools, there will be no human teachers, there will be no classrooms, there will be no classmates and there will be no fun for the students. The story starts in 2157. It tells us the story is about the future. Margie writes a diary and it reveals that Tommy has found a real book. One day, Margie was writing a diary entry on her computer screen. At the time, it reveals that Tommy on that day has found a real book. Tommy and Margie, they were very much surprised by seeing that real book because they haven't seen the real book. Because they knew only PDF books and the tele books which were appeared only on their computer screens. That's why it is a wonderful experience for them to look at the real book. The real book is printed on paper. That means nowadays what the books we have been getting, these kind of books in the future, we may not see. That's why here the two children felt very very surprised by seeing the real book. And the pages of the book are yellow and crinkly. The book is centuries old. So that book was very old book. That's why the pages of that book color has been changed into yellow. And that book pages have so many lines, unfoldings. Margie's grandfather once told her that when he was a small boy, his grandfather told him that they used to have books which were printed on paper. So Margie has remembered a thing which was told by her grandfather. Her grandfather once told Margie that when he was a small boy, his grandfather told him that his grandfather told him that he used to have the real books. That means the books which were printed on paper. By this you can understand Margie's grandfather also doesn't know about the real books. But Margie's grandfather's grandfather studied the real books. That you can understand here. Okay? Right. Next, if you see, they feel strange about the book as the words are not moving like on the computer screen. They were same as before, even they turn over and come back to the pages. By these lines you can understand they are feeling very very surprised and they feel very strange because the words which are on the paper they are not moving like on their computer screens. Even they turn the pages if they come to the first page the words are same as it is how they have seen at the first time. But uh, if you see the tele books they were not like that. The words are moving on the uh, tele books that means on their computer screens that's why they feel very strange about this original or real book tommy calls the book worthless and waste tommy then calls the real book as the worthless and waste why why did he call there is a reason look at that once the book is read it is of no use so according to tommy if we read the book once then there is no use of that book but the television screen has had a million books on it and one cannot throw it away. And here Tommy is comparing the real book to the computer screen or the television screen. The television screen had a million of books on it. That's why they cannot throw the computer screen or the television screen away. But we can throw this book after reading. Okay, because it is only a single book. But the television screen contains a million of books. That's why here Tommy has said that the book is worthless and it is waste because we can throw it away after reading it. 
Margie also feels the same. Margie also felt the same about the real book. But she was curious to know what the book is about. But Margie is very very interested to know about what is there in that book. That means the book is about what she wanted to know. Tommy informs her that the book is about school. So Tommy has read already the book the real book that's why he had said her that uh, this book tells about the schools the old kind of schools but margie doesn't know that margie doesn't like school so as a as an 11 years old girl she doesn't like school here school refers to a room in her house in that room the mechanical teacher will be available and that mechanical teacher will teach her everything that means a computer screen nowadays she hates it more because her mechanical teacher has been giving her test after test in geography and she has been doing worse and worse margie generally doesn't like school and nowadays she hates it very much because the mechanical teacher is not performing well and not functioning well test after test in geography subject it is providing for margie and margie is doing worse than worse and margie said about this problem to her mother at the time margie's mother sends for the county inspector who is a round little man so by knowing the problem in the computer or the mechanical teacher margie's mother sent for the concerned person who can repair that uh, mechanical teacher or computer screen and he is called county inspector and that county inspector came to margie's house and uh, he was a round little man he takes the television teacher apart and repairs it within an hour this county inspector just uh, removed all the connections of that uh, uh, computer screen that means the television and then he repaired it uh, within one hour he is well versed and he is very skillful person we can understand he tells here he refers to the county inspector he tells margie's mother that it was not margie's fault but the geography sector of the mechanical teacher was guided little too quick and he has slowed that to an average 10 year level so by this we can understand he refers to county inspector county inspector tells margie's mother that it was not the problem of margie margie is good and her studies also satisfactory but the problem is with the mechanical teacher and the geography sector was not functioning well it is moving very fast and he informed that he had set right that problem and he had made it slow to an average 10 year old level he assures margie and her mother that there will be no problem henceforth and after that the county inspector has given assurance to margie and her mother that now onwards there will be no problem with this computer screen then county inspector left the house margie is very interested to know about the school that existed in the olden days margie wants to know about the old kind of schools and how the system was there at that time that all she wanted to know Tommy tells her that it is not the regular school which they have that is the old kind of school that they had centuries ago so at that time Tommy informed her that means Tommy told Margie that it was not like a regular school what they have that means they have the regular school in their home only at their homes only a separate room is like a school for them but uh, the old kind of school is not like that centuries ago there was a different kind of school like that uh, he had intimated in the old kind of schools the students had human teacher who taught them and gave them homework and also asked them questions in the olden days in that old kind of schools the students had human teachers and the human teacher teaches and he gives or she gives them homework and even the human teacher asks the students questions also at the time margie innocently argued with uh, tommy margie argues and disagrees that a man cannot be smart enough 
but tommy says that his father is as smart as his computer teacher so at the time maji argues like this so how a man substitutes our mechanical teacher man is not smart like our mechanical teacher like that maji argues but tommy doesn't accept it and he says that his father is as clever and as smart as his computer teacher that means his father has great knowledge like the computer so tommy says this then maji doesn't argue she also accept that accepts that tommy further tells her that the teachers didn't stay in the house and teach them in their houses and then marji has got a doubt how a stranger should be allowed to their houses for the sake of teaching at that time tommy laughed and he has said that the teachers won't come to our houses to teach and the students have to go to a place which is called school and there the teachers teach the students like this he has said and they had a special building that is the school and all the kids go there so once upon a time there will be there would be a building that is called school and it has so many classrooms and different ages of children would go there and they get the education the kids of the same age learned the same thing and moreover he had said that uh, the kids of the same age they get the same kind of uh, material and information lessons and everything marji likes the old kind of school very much because they have a lot of fun so marji doesn't like uh, their present school system but she liked very much uh, the old school system because the children use it to go together use it to come back from the school to houses together they had a, they had a great fun while they are in the classrooms and in the uh, uh, playground like this they had a lot of fun in the olden days that's why marji likes very much the old kind of schools because they have a lot of fun in meantime marji's mother called them and intimated them that they had to attend the school so that time marji's mother had called them for the sake of school because it is time to school for them so here school means their house only in their house only they have a separate room and there they go and just they get education now it is marji's school time she goes into the school room which is right next to her bedroom and the mechanical teacher is on and waiting for her she puts her homework in the slot with a sigh then marji entered the classroom that is nothing but a separate room in her home only and the mechanical teacher that means the computer screen or the television screen is already on and that mechanical teacher was waiting for marji to teach and then after going there marji has kept the homework in the given slot with a sigh that means with some disappointment because she likes very much the olden days school but again she came to the very boring classroom that's why she feels very disappointed marji thinks about the old kind of schools while the computer teacher is teaching so the computer teacher started teaching but marji is not listening to it she was thinking about the old kind of schools all the kids from the whole neighboring neighborhood coming laughing and shouting in the school yard sitting together in the school room going home together at the end of the day she was thinking like this so all the children from the neighborhood come to school they laugh they shout in the school yard and they sit together they get doubts and they clarify by discussing that means their friends and all and at the end of the day they you, they can come back uh, uh, together to their homes so like this that the days have great fun marji feels those schools were far better than the schools of today because they offered great fun to students so marji felt that the olden schools were better than uh, the present schools because 
the present schools are isolated so individually the children are getting education at their homes only so that she doesn't like because it is very boring that's why marji was thinking that the old schools were very very uh, good and they are giving great memories to the children so this is about the summary of the fun they had i hope you understood very well right good now let us discuss thinking about language in this the first one is adverbs and they asked us here to read the sentence taken from the story let us read the sentence they had once taken tommy's teacher away for nearly a month because the history sector had blanked out completely here if you observe the word completely it is an adverb and this word was the combination of the adjective complete and the suffix ly that means the word complete which is an adjective and if we add ly which is the suffix at the end of this word complete then completely that adverb had been formed in the same way here we have some more adverbs those are awfully sorrowfully completely loftily carefully differently quickly nonchalantly here they have given one question for us find the sentences in the lesson which have the adverbs given in the box below that means the adverbs which have been given here in the box that adverbs contained sentences we have to find out from the lesson okay here i have given the answers for you the first one is awfully they turned the pages which were yellow and crinkly and it was awfully funny this is the line we can find the adverb awfully the next one is sorrowfully the mechanical teacher had been giving in this line you can find the word or the adverb sorrowfully then the third one completely they had once taken tommy's teacher in this line you can get the adverb completely the fourth one loftily he added loftily pronouncing the word carefully centuries ago in this line you can find the adverb loftily the next one is carefully he added loftily pronouncing the word carefully centuries ago in this line you can find the adverb carefully the next one sixth one differently but my mother says a teacher so in this line you can find differently which is the adverb next one quickly i didn't say i didn't like it marji said quickly so here you can find the adverb quickly next eighth one nonchalantly maybe he said nonchalantly here in this line you can find the adverb nonchalantly we completed first task then the second one now use these adverbs to fill in the blanks in the sentences below that means whatever the box they have given for us before and that adverbs we have to use properly in these blanks okay let us do it now here i gave you answers also the report must be read carefully so that performance can be improved for the first one the answer is carefully at the interview samir answered our questions loftily shrugging his shoulders for the second one the answer is loftily third one we all behave differently when we are tired or hungry for the third one differently is the answer the fourth one the teacher shook her head sorrowfully when ravi lied to her for the fourth one the word sorrowfully is the answer then fifth one i completely forgot about it for fifth one the answer is completely for sixth one when i complimented revathi on her success she just smiled nonchalantly and turned away for the sixth one the answer is nonchalantly for the seventh one the president of the company awfully is busy and will not be able to meet you for the seventh one awfully is the correct answer then the eighth one i finished my work quickly so that i could go out and play for the seventh for the eighth one the answer is quickly so we completed task 2 
here we should remember a thing before going to start task 3 that is an adverb describes an action so what does an adverb do it describes action and we can form adverbs by adding ly to adjectives this one already we learnt in our previous section then spelling note here one spelling note we have to take whenever the adjective is ending with y at that time the y changes into i then we add ly for example see here angry is an adjective okay if you want to change this into an adverb like angrily at that time in the place of y we should add i then we add the suffix ly then the spelling would be like this a n g r i l y so like this y changes into i so this spelling note you should remember now let us see the next task which is our third one make adverbs from these adjectives here they gave some adjectives those are angry happy merry sleepy easy noisy tidy gloomy now we have to convert these adjectives into adverbs here i have given you the answers let us see them angry angrily happy happily merry merrily sleepy sleepily easy easily noisy noisily tidy tidily gloomy gloomily if you see here this y which is at the ending that has been changed into i then we added ly then it has been converted to adverb for every word it happened if you observe here okay this is about adverbs we have completed adverbs now roman number two here they have given if not and unless unless means nothing but if not you should remember it okay and this if not or unless we use in the possible condition of if classes so we have four classes okay that means four conditions in that possible condition in that condition we use this if not or unless let us see here we have given some examples here let us see them there won't be any books left unless we preserve time you won't learn less your lessons if you don't study regularly tommy will have an accident unless he drives more slowly if you observe all these three examples here you can understand future tense is used then present tense is also used okay that means if you want to use unless or if not definitely you should take the combination of present tense and future tense then here they asked us to complete the following conditional sentences use the correct form of the verb they have given here fill in the blanks i have done already for you and if you want you can change them there is no problem okay let us see them if i don't go to anu's party tonight she will get irritated if you don't telephone to the hotel to order food you will miss your meal unless you promise to write back i will not write you another letter if she doesn't play any games she will become lazy unless that little bird flies away quickly the cat will pounce on it and kill it so like this you can write in your own also okay but here i have given you like some examples you can take them or you can write your own also but here all i have used the future tense simple future tense i have used if you observe this yes or no right next here the writing part was given here the question is a new revised volume of isaac asimov short story has just been released order one set write a letter to the publisher mindframe private limited 1632 asafali road new delhi requesting that a set be sent to you by value payable post vpp and giving your address so you have to write a letter to the publisher of mindframe private limited for the sake of asimo short stories set okay so and there you have to give your address and uh, then you have to write a letter for ordering uh, and you have to request them that uh, you will pay money by value payable post and that letter you have to 
remember that these parts should be there address addresses of the sender and the receiver then the salutation then the body of the letter then the closing phrase and the signature and one more thing you should remember you are writing here a formal letter that's why you should not use any kind of contracted forms so that means short forms you should not use okay in the official letters or in the formal letters we should not use the short forms we have to use the full forms only okay right so now let us see the answer if you see here one bar one dash 48 balaji colony tirupati andhra pradesh like that even this is the address of the of the here if you see addresses of the sender and receiver they have given so here i have given my address then here date you have to mention then here the address to whom you are sending okay mind frame private limited 1632 asafali road new delhi this is the address they have given already here mind frame private limited that address only i have taken here so what i completed addresses of the sender and the receiver i have completed here okay then here dear sir or madam what is this this is the salutation this is the salutation dear sir or madam this is called salutation then if you see here i have written body of the letter so from i have known to here at the earliest this part is called body of the letter okay i have known that a new revised volume of isaac asimov short stories has been released this is to request you to send me a set of the same by value payable post vpp and the address given above i shall be highly obliged if you could send me the book at the earliest here you can write yours sincerely then here you can write your signature i did not put any signature here but you can put this is nothing but closing phrases and the signature that is nothing but here yours sincerely after here you can keep your own signature okay this is the answer for this question writing okay we have completed it and you can write in your own okay need not to follow this but this is the model you can take it okay so i think you you understood it very very effectively because just we have seen here it should be very simple and in a direct way and we should not use any kind of short forms that you should remember here okay good now let us discuss the poem the road not taken the poem the road not taken was written by robert frost let us know a few details about robert frost his complete name or his full name is robert lee frost he was born on 26th march 1874 in san francisco us and he died on 29th january 1963 in boston in us and he has got pulitzer prize which was very famous prize in english literature and he had written so many works in that the notable works are a boy's will north of boston new hampshire this is about our poet robert frost let us see now some glossary diverged which means separated and took a different direction undergrowth dense growth of plants and bushes wanted wear which means had not been used hence which means here in the future okay so this is about the glossary so now let us see the summary one day the poet was walking down the road in the woods that means poet is walking in the wood wood means a small forest like that there he found a diversion there were two different paths and he had to choose one out of them while he was walking on a single road after traveling so the road has been diverged into two so now he has to choose on which way he has to travel he could travel over only one of the paths so he is only one person right so he can travel on only one path so now he has to decide which path he has to take or which road he has to take to travel he took time to choose the right path so there he stopped and he thought for a while and now this is the time he has to take the right choice 
because if he has chosen the wrong path and his life will not be happy whatever can happen that's why he had stopped there and he was thinking and he was observing the both roads he observed them to decide which was a better option so he observed the roads so which is better like that he was feeling and then chose the one which seemed less walked over finally what he has chosen he has chosen the less walked or less traveled road because that gives him some difference he kept the other one for some other day although he knew that he would never get the chance to walk over for it that means here the poet had taken the decision that he wanted to travel along the less traveled road so he thought that the other one is for another other time he could travel but he knew that he could not come back and he could not travel on the other road so if he takes up a road to travel he cannot get a chance to travel along the another one so he knew very well that whatever the decision he has taken that he can't taken back he can't take back that means he could not correct it so he could not again come back and he could not again travel on the other one he decided to walk along the less travel road as it shows difference he felt that his future depends on the choice that he has made that means here whatever the daring decision he has taken that decides his future definitely there would be so many difficulties and uh, there would be so many obstacles but uh, he decided to travel on the less traveled road and actually this one we can apply for our life so sometimes we get uh, some confusion to take the decisions those times we have to take the decisions bravely and we should aware that whatever the decision we have taken we should fix for it and later we can't uh, take other decision once if we have taken the decision then we have to move forward so here also the poet has taken a decision and he knew that he can't come back and change his decision that's why here he is giving a suggestion for us that is you have to think a lot before taking a decision and try to take the decisions bravely and whatever the problems you get after taking the decisions don't feel just to move on try to get success that is nothing but the main theme of this poem the road not taken which was written by robert frost i hope you understood this very well thank you very much have a nice day